reasons for eviction, common defenses, and then at the end, we're gonna give you some awesome resources, one of which is Larry, um, another of which is us, <laughs> um, and uh, some advice and encouragement for um, doing the clinic at the courthouse. Thank you for being here. Um, so the first thing I wanna explain is that every year about 2,800 eviction cases are filed in Ramsey County. Um, eviction cases used to be called unlawful detainers, and you might have heard of that. People say, I have a UD on my record. That's what they mean. The statute was changed from unlawful detainer, which is a very technical legal term, to eviction, which most people understand, although people still call it UD, even the court sometimes. So. Um, the most important rules and laws that you should know about to do this clinic are found in 504B. Um, it's, it's not complex, it's pretty straightforward. If you have a question, you can always look at the statute. Um, we have developed a tool that we'll show you later that kind of links to the statute so you can pick it up. Um, but most of the things that you will need to know or find or look at will be in one of those two places. Um, and I just wanna explain, eviction court is only for possession of the property. So. The only thing that gets decided at the court is who gets to live in the property. They don't decide, you know, you have a money judgment. They don't decide other things. They only decide, the, the court only decides who has legal rights to possession. So some of those other extraneous issues might be implicated in the hearing, but it's only about who lives in the unit because we'll get people that come to us and be like, oh, this is really unfair, but I'm moving. <laughs> So, so be careful. Just remember what you're fighting for. You're fighting to stay. So if someone doesn't want to stay, you kind of don't need to go down this road. Um, and the other really, really important thing to remember is that once an eviction is filed, once someone goes down to the courthouse and files for eviction, it's a public record. It's a public record before they get served. It's a public record before court happens. It's a public record if um, the tenant loses. It's a public record if the tenant wins. It's a public record if the landlord files and there are check boxes. There's an eviction there. And when people look for a new apartment and, and fill out applications, those are the first thing that prospective owners look at. They look out, look at, has anyone ever been evicted before? And they pop up. And they say, we are gonna deny anyone who's had an eviction filed against them in the last two years. And what that means is that our clients, people who you will be seeing, their housing choice is limited to very select neighborhoods that have unsafe housing, that have unsafe neighborhoods, that are in disrepair, that are not uh, areas of opportunity where there's transit. It really limits a tenant's housing choice to have an eviction on their record. So one thing that I want to just remind everybody during this whole time is that the people that you're seeing have that. They are coming to you because someone's filed this in court and it's there. It's like the unpaid bill that has the biggest late fee that you've ever gotten before, right? It's got a big penalty because you paid your rent late or because you put something wrong. So just to remember that and put that in perspective. Eviction records are really a big deal for most people. All right, so Carol talked a little bit about the housing court schedule. Um, first appearances are on Tuesday and Thursday mornings at 8.15, <laughs> which is early for us, but even earlier for a lot of people that have to come there. Um, of course, our clients work evenings or have different sleep schedules. There's always an issue with that. Um, basically, the first appearances are admit or deny hearings. So, there's no court trials that happen at 8.15 on a Tuesday and Thursday. It's kind of, you, you come in and you say, I did or I didn't do what it says in the complaint. Um, those first appearances are handled by four uh, Ramsey County referees and they rotate. And so it will be in front of someone who is experienced, who knows um, housing court, who has been trained by all of us and um, who is uh, understanding of the things we're gonna teach you today. So they'll, they'll be attuned to this stuff. It's not someone who doesn't know what service defense is. Um, and so what happens at the first appearance is 
tenants can admit that they did whatever's in the complaint, they can settle the case, they can ask for a continuance, um, they, um, they can make a motion at the first appearance. Motions in housing court, according to the housing court rules, can be in writing or you can make them orally at the time of the, the appearance, um, which is handy because it's a very short deadline and you need to be able to have flexibility. Um, the other thing that happens at the first appearances is trials are set. Right now, trials are being set out two to four weeks. The statute says six days. A couple of, uh, this morning, a couple of owners got really testy about that. And I don't know how the court's gonna find someone to hear a case in, in six days, but I scheduled a trial for August 6th this morning. So just to give you some idea, that's kind of the time frame for that. Um, uh, there is an appeal process. If you have a trial and lose, you have to file an appeal in 15 days. Nobody needs to do that. Just I want everyone just to know that. <laughs> um, and the big thing in housing court is the writ. Um, so when I talked about um, what does housing court decide, housing court decides possession. How do they decide possession? They decide possession by issuing what's called a writ of recovery. And what that means is that the, the sheriff has authority to go out and change the locks and uh, remove the, the uh, occupants of a, a property. And we're gonna talk more about that later when you're advising someone should you settle or not settle. Um, most settlements include a provision for what happens if the settlement is breached. And sometimes if the settlement is breached, they say the owner can go and get a writ. And a writ is gotten by filing an affidavit that the tenant breached the settlement agreement. So it's a big hammer that can fall. So I just want to put that out there. <laughs> We're going to talk more about it in a minute. But a writ of recovery is what enables the sheriff to actually remove the tenants from the property. And the court would issue that or say it will be issued or it can be issued. All right. Um, this is what a summons and complaint looks like. Um, and Michael left, but he was really instrumental in um, doing this one summons, which is, is this document right here. Um, when you see people who are at court, this is what they'll have. They'll have this summons, and attached to it will be sometimes a form complaint, which is a court form, or sometimes the um, lawyers will draft up their own eviction complaint. So it'll have those two things. Um, And it's like any other caption. You, you know how this works <laughs> with the date and the time and the parties and whatever. Um, all right. So, um, to file an eviction case, one must pay a filing fee of $300. That becomes important later when we talk about non-payment and redemption. But, so just remember, $300. Um, and so I'm here I'm gonna switch over a little bit to what are the defenses? What are you gonna see as a defense if someone comes to you and says, I, these are my court papers, I don't know what to do, do I have a defense to this case? Um, and we're gonna talk a little bit about service because in um, eviction cases, um, the, uh, the court requires strict compliance with service. And the filing, um, and the filing service must be more than seven and less than 14 days before the court hearing. That's really quick. <laughs> it's really quick. So when you hear people like, oh, it takes forever to evict anybody, you can say, well, I thought it was between seven and 14 days, because that's what the statute says. Um, the uh, owner has to personally serve the defendant or try to personally serve them twice. One of the times has to be between 6 p.m. and 10 p.m. If the defendant cannot be personally served, then they can do what's called substitute service. In the biz, we call this mail and nail because what it, what it says is that you can, you can mail a copy of the summons and complaint, which was the last slide, um, and then you can take the summons and complaint and you can stick it right on their front door. 
It says, the statue says a conspicuous place, but that's usually a tenant's front door. So right on the tenant's front door, it says, you are being evicted. Also personally, perfectly acceptable service. Um, question. Yeah. So can they put that, can they put it on the front door at the same time that they attempt to service the second time? Yep. So you have to file an affidavit of plaintiff not found before you can do the mail and mail. Um, yeah. Do they need to certify that they did the two attempts? Yes. Okay. They have to file an affidavit, and that has to that will be filed with the court, and we have a, a plan for looking at the court filings. Um, so you can look that up, and you can see what does the affidavit say. And I would say if someone comes to you as a service defense, look at that affidavit. It's usually it's more information than um, the service can't be by the plaintiff. Um, the service has to be on someone of suitable age and discretion. Um, the service has to be a, on someone who resides at the property. It can't be on the plaintiff, did you say? It can't be by the plaintiff. Oh, okay. So if you're a party to the lawsuit, you can serve the defendant. Um, and the affidavit must be filed before the first appearance. So before Tuesday or Thursday at 8.15, the, the plaintiff in the, the case has to say, I gave notice of this hearing. The timeline is very short. There are a lot of problems with compliance. I would advise you to look at those papers and see if there's anything there. I would verify what it says in those to see, because tenants will say, well, I came home and I found it on the door this day, and then you'll be like, well, let me make sure. You know, how do you know it was that day, and that kind of thing. But um, these are cases that the referees will routinely dismiss at the first appearance. If someone has a, a service defense, you should let them know, and they can ask the referee to dismiss based on this. It puts tenants in a much better bargaining position if they're trying to get caught up on rent or something like that. Um, all right. And then I'm gonna do this slide and then turn it over to Kristen. Okay, so when I showed you the form complaint, there are basically four reasons that tenants can be evicted, and they're in that form complaint. The first, by far the most common, and most of the cases that you will be seeing is non-payment of rent. Someone didn't pay their rent. That's gonna be the vast majority of these. Uh, the second type of case is a breach of lease. 